Hi loves, Joy Sparkle VS. Um, I filmed this the other day, it was right after I filmed the, uh, the My Advice on Suicide video. Um, and I wasn't sure whether to put it up because I got a lot of mixed reactions on that video. Um, and I was in a really, really difficult place. Uh, if you guys didn't hear me talk about it, you can see a live stream that I'll link somewhere that I did where I've kind of opened up this last week on some things that have come up that have been really difficult that kind of brought up those feelings. Well, at the same time, um, I found out the news that I am, like, literally a pound over being clinically obese. Uh, medically obese, I guess you'd say. So, and I've come out the other side of it processing it and feeling really good about it, to be honest. Um, I'm okay with it. But I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and put it up because I know there are a lot of other people who have medical issues or have gained weight from medical issues and I know that struggle that you go through mentally and how difficult that can be on your heart and how difficult it can be to go through the judgment people put on you. Um, and I know there's a difference between just having a shitty unhealthy lifestyle and people who genuinely can't help their, their physical situation. And I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, so with that being said, I'll just go ahead and play this video. I just wanted to give that intro that I'm okay and I love myself and I feel good where I'm at. And if you are going through the similar struggle that I went through, sorry, it's late and I'm itching. <laughs> So I'm like, my eye is tired, but it's also itching at the same time. Um, and if you're going through a similar struggle with your body, just remember that um, whatever it is, when the time is right, your body will heal. You will overcome it, and um, you are not your body. You are way more than your body, and you are beautiful just because you exist and because you have the ability to love and share with people and care at people. So, okay, here we go. Roll it. <laughs> Hey guys, Joy Sparkle BS. This is the continuation of the suicide rant. <laughs> um, so, uh, I got some really, really disturbing news for me. Um, I feel stupid for even being upset about this. So, if you guys have been following me, um, you know that. And I'm gonna try to vlog here more, by the way. I don't know how often, but I'm gonna try to do at least two or three of these a week. So, you know, keep an eye on this channel if you want to see more about my personal life and me opening up about things. But as you guys know, um, my weight has stabilized. Thank God, it's been stabilizing. And I'm about like a hundred and, I, I go back and forth between about 165 and 170 pounds right now. But I'm not, I'm not gaining anymore. Thank God. Now nah, it's probably about more like 168, 165 to 168. Um, and what I want to talk about today is I did something stupid for me, something very stupid. Uh, I decided, I wonder what my BMI is. I know, you know where this is going. So I looked it up and today I am one pound over being obese. Right now I am clinically medically obese. I like, I just have to let that sink in. Um, a year and a half ago. I was able to maintain weighing, what, 110, 105, 110 pounds, maybe 115. Before I got sick, I was between 100 to 105. Um, I was a fat kid. I was. I, I struggled with my weight, and I've struggled with my weight on and off in the years. But over the last probably four or five years, I was able to really get a diet regimen down and really understand my body and healthy living and organic living, and I was a vegetarian, and sorry about the AC. And um, I really got it down to where it was it was simple, you know? It, it was, maintaining my weight was simple. I come from big people on both sides of my family. I'm one of the smallest people. Even when I was a really fat kid, I was never obese. I am considered obese. And it's really hard. It's really, it's hitting my ego. I should be grateful. I should just be in a state of being grateful, and I have been that I'm not gaining more weight, but shit, that much weight in a year and a half from illness and a lot of it was still trying to eat clean while having the stomach issues. It's really hard, guys. It's really, really hard. Um, because I was somebody that was took a lot of pride in how my body looked. I took a lot of pride in how I presented myself and the, the beautiful clothing I wore and dressing up. And I took a lot of pride and I was really, really happy. It was like my body was this beautiful art form. And now I just feel like a mess. And it's hard because it's not like in my position because if this happens because I'm sick, I can't just buckle down and do a diet and exercise change. In fact, that would backfire massively. I have a system down that has been 
honestly, over the last month, month and a half, that's maintained my weight, and I'm grateful for that. Um, it, it's crazy, but it works. And slowly, I'm able to eat more healthy food. So it used to be I could do, for a while, I had to do stuff like pizza every day. I would order a pizza and just eat it and cry. I would cry getting the pizza because I, I don't like eating heavy foods like that. I like my fucking grilled salmon and my herbs and my tabbouleh and my, like my uh, uh, quinoa and my brown rice, you know, my bulgur wheat um, and my veggies and I can't hardly eat veggies right now. But it is helping me maintain because of my stomach issues. And even though it's all getting better, it's like the reality hit, I am right now bigger than I ever have been. And there's nothing I can do to fix it. So what I do, what, what do I do in this situation? It bothers me to no end. And it's very embarrassing to put myself out there when I weigh this much. You guys probably, a lot of you say, well, we can't see it. It's because most of my weight is from the waist down. It's honestly, it's like my hips and my ass. <laughs> it really is. Um, you know, and of course it distributes other places slowly. Like you probably see more of a double chin over time, but um, it's hard and it's hard knowing that it's because you're sick. Because there's nothing I can do. The hardest part of the comments, it's not the comments of you're fat. I'm fine with that. If the comments are, you're not sick, you're just fat and lazy. You're fucking psycho. You're not sick. I'll never understand the concept of why would you kick somebody when they're down? Why kick a sick person when they're down? You know, in our society, we've gone past if somebody has a mental, if they have some sort of mental handicap or physical handicap, we don't push them around just because, but yet on the internet, and just it's not just in the internet, this happens a lot in our lives. When you're sick, you are absolutely judged. Oh, you're not really sick. You just don't want to work and want the government to pay for everything, which means you just want me to pay for everything. It's uh, And what sucks is I can also understand because there are a lot of people that do that. There are people that abuse the system left and right. In fact, from a lot of people abusing the system, I can't get on insurance right now. I get it. I, I get why people would be skeptical, but when you really see somebody in a lot of physical pain and they're going through transformations in their body from that pain, why? What would possess you to kick them when they're down? Maybe it's a different moral structure? I don't know. Skeptical is fine. I can understand healthy skepticism and being cautious and protecting yourself because there are predators and people who will take advantage, but like, like what the fuck am I doing to take advantage of anybody? You know? Uh, in fact, I'm giving the majority of my money away consistently. I've just stopped talking about a lot of what I've been doing because I want to help people and I want to try to help myself as well. And What's hard is looking at it and knowing that there's nothing I can do until December and then January because i that's when I have to sign up for insurance and hopefully YouTube will continue to provide me with what I need so I can get the top-notch insurance and have the money to go after getting all the testing I need to figure out what's wrong with me. I had this big talk with roommate. Roommate's like, okay, the fibro sucks, but it seems like you've been managing the fibro a lot more and what is really bothering you and the body issues, the weight issues are from the diarrhea. Yes, and that's exactly what it is. Um... So he's like, so we have to get your stomach issues down. So I'll need to, do, I'm sure I'll have to do like fucking a, a stool sample test and all types of things. And I just want to know, it's like a year and a half ago when all of this started with my stomach, it was like I got a stomach bug for like three weeks that never fully went away. And it is getting better. It's better than what it was, but it's still enough that it's made me obese. And I think the really hard part is that it didn't need to be this way. There were people that helped put me in this position to be this sick. And I told them, it's hard, a year ago, I remember I had a, uh, I had a conversation with roommate and I told him, I said, um, I remember I hit 130 pounds and I just freaked out. I freaked out. It had been years since I had been that weight. And I said, if I don't get this under control, I'm gonna be obese. And here it, uh, and here it is one year later and that's exactly what happened. And there were people in my life who should have stepped up and helped me and that didn't. And that left me for dead. And that's really hard to look at. It's hard to look at. I didn't have to go through all these physical transformations. I didn't have to um, go through all this. It's just that the people who were supposed to love me and care about me chose to abandon me because they wanted to be selfish. People that I gave everything to. In fact, people that I gave my life to. The people that, the person that I signed up to get this device with that has destroyed my life, who said they were going to marry me, who got engaged to me, said in sickness and in health, lied. 
No, I was just good for a fuck. And to be thrown away like trash. See, I wish those were the conversations we had with our daughters and our sons. It's not just, hey, you can get STDs. Oh, and you can get somebody pregnant. And it's gonna suck. How about every time you have sex with somebody, you're putting your life in danger? How about that? And I can already hear people say, you shouldn't make people be afraid to have sex. No, I think we need to put a healthy fear of sex because that's the reality of it. And it's not that I want people to be scared of sex, but they need to fully understand the consequences. Because young men seem to not have the understanding that pregnancy can kill you, birth can kill you, complications can kill you, and we don't live in a society that gives a shit about the mothers that give birth. That's why mortality rate for mothers giving birth and expected mothers is on the rise. What was that noise? I don't know what that was. I'm not exactly sure what noise I just made. <laughs> um, they need to understand uh, that having sex can fuck with the girl's hormones. I mean, anytime you fuck with anybody's hormones, male or female, can do a lot of damage to your body. That birth control can be very dangerous for people's bodies. I made a decision six years ago. Seven, no, it's almost, almost seven, wow. I made a decision almost seven years ago to get on birth control to protect the person I was with from having a child and to protect me as well. And they left me for dead over and over and over and over again. How do you deal with that? And how do you ever trust anybody again, you know? How do you deal with that? My whole life has been destroyed. While this person gets to have a life, they get to go found out I can have vacation soon. They get to have a job. They get to have all the freedom that they want and throw it in my face while I sit and suffer. And I know somewhere deep down that person thinks I deserve it. That's hard. I've had a lot of people in my life that are jealous of different things about me. And it took me many years to understand because I always thought I'm a worthless piece of shit. Like, why would anybody be jealous? But I've, I've accomplished a lot in my little life. And, and, and so far, with, all, with everything I've had against me, I've accomplished a lot. And I've done a lot of things that I've realized have made people jealous. And a lot of people take pride and happiness in watching me suffer because they feel I deserve it. Because why should I get to have all these good things happen to me when they don't get to have those things happen to them? So obviously, it makes them feel good to be suffering because somewhere inside themselves, it justifies to them why they should never go after the things that they want and punish the people that do. Does that make sense? And that's hard. So, these are all the issues I'm dealing with coming up about being literally, clinically, and medically obese right now. Am I upset that I'm obese or am I upset that the people who are supposed to love me and take care of me and protect me either didn't do it or they completely lied to me to use me. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that and just not want to leave the planet, right? Well, I'll tell you how I deal with it. It's like the video I said yesterday. You tell yourself there's a reason you're here, even if you don't see it. It's a miracle that you're here. You're beautiful just because you exist. And every day that you wake up, you have the ability to help make this world a better place. And as a result, everything you're going through has some deeper meaning and will end up being eventually helpful to you even if you can't see it. Then I realized how many other people are going through something similar. So maybe I should talk about it. Of course, I get hate and get all kinds of comments, but fuck the hate, you know? All my life, not all. The majority of my life, I've let the wrong people in. I've trusted the wrong people from having years of neglect and abandonment and abuse and not knowing. See, I equated all that with love. Even now, I, 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 I have a hard time sometimes with that. I let the wrong people in and I've wasted a lot of time wondering why they didn't love me when I needed to love me. I need to let the right people in. And now it's hard because somewhere in my mind, I tell myself, well, you are fucking disgusting now. Your body is disgusting. You are no longer what you were and you will never be that. But everything is temporary, even these bodies. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to let go of the ego of, of what my body looks like because that doesn't matter. I mean, it, yes, it's, it's nice 
to be small. It's great to be healthy and we should all strive for that, but I can't not, I try not to stress about the things I can't control or change. And this is something right now I can't control or change. I just try to tell myself that this is what my body's doing. I believe it's doing this to get better. I am getting better and I'm trying to thank my body every day for keeping me alive. There's a billion fucking cells in this body keeping it working. That's, that's beautiful. That's a gift. That's amazing. You know, and I'm trying to let go of the idea that my worth is attached to what I look like. Even though it's embarrassing and it's really hard. We are not our bodies. You are not your body. What you are is you are your heart. You are your mind. You are the amount of love you can share with yourself and with other people. And you are of service to the world just because you exist. So, I am obese. But obesity is not me. I am not a label I put on myself. I am not ugly. I am not worthless. I am not unworthy of love. I am somebody who's still going through a process of trying to find the right situations, the right people, the right love in myself to not ever allow people like that into my life again to hurt me that much because I'm worthy and deserving of love that is healthy and love that is kind and patient. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So thank you for listening. Hope you guys have a good day. I love every one of you cocksuckers, I really do. I love all you guys and I really hope that this may be helped if you're going through something similar. You're not your body. That's why I love the Care Bears so much. Care Bears were all about like, hey, it doesn't fucking matter how much you achieve or what all you accomplish. What matters is that everybody can care about somebody and, and be helpful to the world. And that's what I've tried to rem remember with gaining weight. There are worse things in the world than gaining weight, but this is one of my biggest weaknesses was how my body looked and being very obsessive about wanting to be small. And this is forcing all that out of me and I'm gonna have to learn a deeper sense of self, which happens every day. And you know what? Fuck the label obesity. My body's getting better. It will come back when it's ready. And I just have to be patient, love myself enough to allow that to happen without judging what I look like or whether or not this physical vessel can give somebody a boner. Because that's not where our worth comes from, even though society and media would tell us differently. I right, love you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care. Lots of blessings. And goodbye.